Howdy everybody, Tex with Lone Star Home Services here, and today I'm going to teach you how to replace an old thermostat. Now, this thermostat was original to the house, built in the mid-80s, so we're going to look into how these thermostats work, why you want to replace them, and then the steps on how to replace that thermostat. So as we look at our thermostat here, we'll see this is the kind that most folks are familiar with in older homes. You got the little, little lever on the bottom uh, that you set to what you want the temperature to be, and then this guy will uh, basically show what that temperature is. So let's pop this open and see how it works on the inside. So down here you got your lever, and your lever you know, moves this back and forth. Um, now the thing is, is this little bubble that you see there is liquid mercury. Now you might see that from your old school thermometers, which is basically uh, what is inside this thermostat. So as you, are, as you move this lever, so you say you move this leather, lever this way, that goes to the hotter temperatures, this coil right here um, will expand as the heat goes on, um, which will move the mercury into position where it then cuts off um, the heat, closes the circuit, uh, cuts off the heat. And then when it, things cool back down and your mercury moves over to that position, um, you know, the heat will turn back on and then it'll go back to the position uh, and do that. So the problem with these thermostats is not only are they wildly inaccurate uh, because there's just such a broad uh, range of motion, you can't get finite um, precision there on your temperature, but they're also pretty inefficient um, because again, you've got that broad range. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this uh, with something a bit newer. Specifically, we're going to do one of these. This is a Honeywell Home. It's a programmable uh, thermostat. The great thing about programmable thermostats is it basically can help you cut anywhere from 10 to 20% off of your uh, energy bill every year. So I'm going to show you the steps on how to do that. First thing we got to do is turn off the power. All right, we're down here in the basement here to our breaker panel. Uh, and what we're going to do is turn off the power to uh, our furnace here. My home does not have uh, heat, uh, or rather does not have uh, it, you know, air conditioning. Uh, it's only heat, so what we're going to do is we're going to find our furnace. That's number 28 right here. Then we find number 28, that's that guy right there, and we're going to flick it to the off position. And you probably just heard the furnace shut off. So now that the furnace is shut off, we know that the power coming from that furnace uh, to the heating system uh, is now off, so we can safely work on our thermometer. All right, now that we've turned off the power, we can start uh, with the removal and replacement process. Now, uh, there's a lot of wires that you see in here. Don't be intimidated. Uh, there's actually the major connections on the back. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is taking off that mounting screw and that mounting screw. Uh, what you also might want to do is score uh, your lines here to make sure that you don't pop off any paint um, or have it you know, peel outside so you don't have to do too much repainting work. Uh, so I'll go ahead and remove these two, and then we'll take a look at what's on the back. All right, I've removed the two mounting screws, and if we take a look, we see that uh, we just have the two wires here on the back. Um, now, as I mentioned before, I only have uh, central heat, uh, specifically with baseboard heaters. So I'm only going to have these two wires here. Now, if you have um, you know heating and cooling, you're obviously going to have a couple more wires. So this is a little simpler than some other uh, options that you might find. Um, also, what we'll notice is... We've got this big unpainted section here. Uh, basically, when this house was painted, they just came right up to uh, the edge. Now, when we replace it with the new one, obviously, it's not exactly the same size. We're going to have a little bit of exposure there uh, of unpainted. So if you have uh, the existing paint, um, you might want to uh, do that. So that way it has uh, clean lines all the way around. So I will go ahead and remove uh, the connections here, and then we will look at uh, wiring up the new um, thermostat. Now, this particular model of thermostat comes with uh, three things in the package. First, you're going to have the back plate, uh, and so this is actually what you're going to be putting uh, your wires from your wall into. You have your mounting equipment, your drywall anchors, your long screws, um, and then you have the actual thermostat itself. Now, this thermostat takes batteries, and you'll see that it plugs into the back plate via these little guys right here. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're basically going to follow the instructions that are included uh, in the package here, 
uh, we're going to mount our back plate uh, using the drywall anchors and the screws in these three holes. Uh, the wires that came out of the wall will come through the middle here and they will go uh, into uh, the respective areas. So the red wire will go into R for red. The white wire will go into white uh, for white. I only have uh, two wires here total. Uh, if you have more, obviously you follow the particular wiring instructions uh, per uh, the Honeywell Home thermostat package. Uh, instructions should take care of you. This is very much a DIY level task. Obviously, if you are uncomfortable with doing any electrical or wire work, you can, of course, get someone um, who is licensed to do so. But this is definitely a homeowner level task. Save you some money. Um, and save you some money on your electric bill. So I'll go ahead and get this uh, backplate mounted and then we will wire it up. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with the process of setting drywall anchors, so this is a drywall anchor. Uh, basically what you do is you create uh, a small hole. Generally what I'll do is I'll use a, ball paint, a small hammer um, and I will just tap in uh, the screw, not all the way to where it's gonna go. This is obviously after you've marked and measured and leveled and done all that fun stuff. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your concrete anchor, I'm sorry, your drywall anchor, and it's going to go in that hole. You can just work it, give it a couple light taps with your hammer to get it flush. Then what will happen is once, once you go to put your screws in, the screw will go in the drywall anchor, and as the screw goes in, the back end of that anchor expands, which helps keeps it locked to the drywall, because this drywall is honestly just half inch of sheetrock. There's nothing really holding anything there. Uh, so drywall anchors help hold stuff to the drywall. Now, obviously this thermometer isn't super heavy, uh, but this just helps it keep nice and tight against the wall. All right, our back plate is mounted to the wall with the drywall anchors and the screws. Now we're gonna wire this guy up. Now, as a reminder, remember the power is off. We made sure about that in the beginning of the video. Uh, so what we're gonna do in this case is we gotta make sure the red wire setting is correct. Now we only have one red wire, so that is up on the one section. If you have two red wires, kick it down to two and then wire it as required. But in our case, we only have uh, the one red wire. So set that on one wire. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our red wire, put it in to the tab. Till it's nice and snug. And then we're gonna do the same thing with our, wi our white wire. White wire is gonna go in till it's nice and snug. You can give these a light little pull, see that they're nice and snugged up. We can push our excess wire into the wall and back this up. Then we close it up. Then all that's left to do is put the batteries in the back of the thermostat and plug it in. And there you have it. This guy is mounted uh, and programmed. So what you can see here uh, is we have our program. So we can actually go to our program here. We, of course, want to keep the program. So this one has a setting for uh, the week days and then the weekend. So if we go to the weekend now, basically I have the setup. So when I wake up, which is around six o'clock because I have two children and they like to wake up, um, sets it to about 64. Uh, we don't like to keep it too warm in the house, especially since, um, well, you know, the price of oil right now, we do have oil heat. Um, so that is set up that way. Uh, now, this is when you're away, and basically that is from 8 o'clock until um, when you set that next time period. We're not really in the bedroom during the day, so there's no point in heating the bedroom during the day. So we just have it set off. Now, this says home. So home is it's set starting at 7 p.m. Uh, it'll heat this room to 67 degrees. So basically, as we start getting ready uh, to go to bed, we're usually starting to put the kids uh, to bed here. So that will start kicking the, the temperature in this room, which is the master bedroom. Uh, up to 67 degrees. Uh, and then when we're asleep, which is about 10 o'clock, it kicks it down to 62. We're in the covers. Uh, we don't want to be cold, but we also don't need to be too heated. Uh, now, obviously, we keep our home a little colder uh, than you might. You can set it to your own schedule. But basically what this does is it makes uh, the whole thing programmable so that it is only on when it needs to be on. Whereas with the uh, traditional, you know, old school one, this guy here, uh, you set it on and you set it off and you had to do it manually. 
so having these set up in your home will help you uh, save anywhere from 10 to 20 percent on your energy bill. Uh, I have four zones in this house, one for the upstairs, one for the master, and then the two halves of downstairs. So I will be replacing all four uh, with these guys, setting them up and saving money. So there you have it. That's how to change out an old thermostat with a new programmable one. Uh, now, as I mentioned before, these programmable thermostats are going to save you anywhere from 10 to 20 percent on your energy bill. Now, that assumes, of course, that you actually program it uh, and that you set it up in a way that you're not using your heating and air uh, when you don't need it. So when you're out of the house, you're at work, um, you don't need to be heating or cooling that house. And so this is going to be a great way uh, to set that up for you. Hopefully this has been helpful. I'm Tex Harris, the Lone Star Home Services. See you next time.